Get ready for some great music and great stories. Band in Seattle starts right now. Welcome to Band in Seattle. I'm Xander Denke, and with me is David Michael Stedman, songwriter, music editor, and lead singer of the band The Stax Brothers, to talk about tonight's band, Sundries. From the moment I laid my ears on the Sundries frontwoman, Sadie Frank, she had me. Girl sounds like Jeff Buckley who slid on the tape and gave it a big old shake. Then when I saw her, Xander, I was done for. She's a beautiful woman, beating out a yellow telecaster like Bruce Springsteen back when he used to rock a beanie. Sadie doesn't have that thing, she has it in spades. Ace of spades. Rest in peace, Lemmy. We'll be right back with Sundries. songs into two categories, like these swaggy songs and then just kind of these rock songs. Little Bird is definitely more of the swag, it's very bass driven. The lyrics get people, there's a line that's just like straight in your face, like sex silk sheets, you know, it's like that line to me is just like the epitome of Sadie's songwriting. It catches people's ear in a way that's like, oh wow, she just said that. Little Bird is about a relationship. It's about watching somebody that you love in a moment struggle and sort of about what that brings up for you, whether or not they're struggling or not, but it's sort of the subjective experience of looking at someone. and I play drums for the band Sundries. When I'm not playing drums, you can find me playing bass for Thunder Pussy. Hey, I'm Ben. When I'm not playing bass in Sundries, I am behind the camera shooting photos. Hi, my name is Sadie Ava. I'm the lead singer of Sundries, and in my spare time, I enjoy working for social justice and social advocacy and reading books about history and math. Hi, I'm Travis Gillette, and I'm the guitar player for Sundries, and you're watching Band in Seattle. such a hard time picking a name. And Travis was like, what about Thord Sundries? It's kind of like retro, throwback. You know, it's very eclectic, which at that point, like we couldn't really pinpoint a genre for our band. We still can't. I was watching The Outsiders, that movie, and on, on the marquee in front of, you know, like this old timey store, it said Sundries on it. I was like, that's kind of a badass word. And then it just sort of stuck. There's still, you know, if you go to convenience stores or something, they have the aisle that has a bunch of random knickknacks that aren't like a specific section of the store. It's called sundries. <laughs> Chicks number one comes from a time when we were naming all of our songs after chicks that I had been dating. I was taking an art history class at the time. So the first verse, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, the line, well, the Greeks wrote about altered states, and I guess that I've lived my life that way. It's learning about Greek pottery and how they sort of explored their love of wine through pottery. And I was at the time drinking heavily, so that's where that line came from. 
A lot of the times I'll bring a song to practice or a riff and we'll just jam on it, you know, or Leah will do the same on a guitar thing or Travis and Ben will. Um, I'm primarily the one who's responsible for the melodies and the lyrics. You know, the backing music comes from all of us. We've gotten to the point now where we have this joke that we could be like, whatever, the best cover band, the best wedding band ever, because any of us can just be like, okay, now we're gonna play like salsa music and we'll play salsa music. So we're really comfortable with each other, which enables songwriting to just flow really easily. Travis writes these weird little licks that I didn't even really listen to until we put the record out. And then all of a sudden I could actually hear what he was doing when we were like in post-production. And he's influenced by a lot of different things. And he's, you know, an incredibly well-educated musician in terms of what he listens to musically. And I think that really comes through in his guitar playing. Um, and we've developed this really awesome guitar relationship, which is really special to me. Um, and he also has a really cool truck and a couple of really cute dogs, so he's, he's doing well. I hate performing live. In normal life, I'm a photographer, so I'm always on the other side of the lens, and for this, you know, this sort of stuff's really awkward for me, but I like being on the side with these guys. <laughs> I'd say my photography is a lot dirtier. I'm usually up to my knees in mud and like muck boots or on a crab fishing boat in Alaska or in a Cessna. It's a little bit more aggressive, but you know, I hope my guitar can get there. Just need more big muff distortion pedals or something. Travis has been one of my best friends since college. We lived together throughout college. And we have this story that we tell people in Seattle that we were we were like rivals in high school. And he he was the jock and I was sort of this like alternative rock and roll guy and that we were always like fighting over the same ladies but it didn't really happen we we played lacrosse together I'm a bass player and I would never write like Ben does and I love his bass lines. He writes very like melodic, almost like lead lines on the bass, which I really like. So I think Ben is an incredible bass player and a great asset um, and probably undervalued, you know, because he's kind of like the quiet guy, but he's, you know, one of my best friends and a great, great, naturally talented bass player. I don't learn well in, with formal education, but I just flourish a little bit more when I can put my hands on it and I can understand it in that way, in its application, I guess. Like, when I actually started playing the bass, like, just touching it, I was like, I want to do this. And that was kind of the same thing with photography. Sadie's one of the most kind of inspiring, you know, actual artists that I've ever met. And she's just crazy well read and wanted to be a mathematician and now she's, a, you know, works at a law firm. Well, I always wrote poetry. In my high school, we were working with a lot of poetry and working with creative writing. So that just became sort of a natural conduit for that. And the voice just flowed from it. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I listened to a lot of Alanis Morissette when I was a kid, so. Maybe that was a factor. There's like a story that my mother will tell where I was unexpectedly the MC of a middle school open mic. 
in which I just like casually took the stage and then proceeded to MC the whole thing with nobody knowing that or being aware of that or I don't remember that. But that was sort of the moment when I think I realized that, oh, I really love being in front of people. I really get a lot of energy from it. Well, Sadie is one of my very best friends in the entire world. I love playing music with Sadie. It's, it's just one of those things that, you know, we grew up across the country from each other. We didn't meet until I was in my mid-20s but it just feels like we grew up together. We've been playing music together forever. Overall, I think Leah is our rock. We consider her our band mom. Leah's just a little powerhouse. Uh, you know, I don't really know how else to describe her. She's just the most consistent you know, always on time, always ready, always has all of her gear. She is like the most, one of the most solid human beings I know, you know. She's definitely the heart of a lot of bands in Seattle. Yet, you know, not to like name check bands in Seattle, but she's in multiple bands in Seattle and she definitely is like a rooted core member of this community, which I think is irreplaceable. I put music aside for a lot of years. I went to college, I got a degree in political science and I like worked on campaigns and it just, kept nagging at me, like, you have to do this in some capacity. So when we started Sundries, the bug just swept back in, and then I was like, I just want to play music as much as I possibly can. A band like Sundries has something that gets easily lost inside a recording studio. A program like this showcases what should splash against analog tape. This is music that should go in the black as vinyl. If it sounds perfect, it's probably ruined. Robbed of all the rock and roll static glory that's been scrubbed from our collective consciousness by unnecessary pitch correction and the state and boring pop perception of Swedish rock and roll perfection. Ace of bass. Amen. We'll be right back with Sundries. Pressure is about the first woman that ever broke my heart when I was in high school. And that's all I will say about that. Every Sundry song is about girls. any female musician in the world, especially in Seattle, they will have a story for you. But it's definitely, since I was 14 years old, being like walking up to a venue with my amp and it's like, where's your boyfriend? Or we don't let girlfriends in. Every female musician I've talked to has had that experience. Leah was just in Southern California at a guitar expo and it was, you know, there was no women there. And the only women that were there were dressed in scantily clad outfits, opening the doors to the Gibson, you know, showroom. It's stuff like that, which is just constantly reinforced. Oh. 
Even if they acknowledge that you are a musician, you're part of the band, they think that you don't know anything about your gear or you can't carry anything. You know, I've had sound guys try and tell me what's inside my bass head and they'll be like, oh, that's a whatever transformer. And I'm like, no, it's actually like four, two, like I know, you know, I know about my gear. That's actually one funny thing in sundries is Ben uses a lot of my bass gear. And so people are always like coming up to him thinking he's gonna be like the gear head and they're like, Oh, can you explain this to me? And then he's like, oh, Leah, what's in here? Usually they're the ones that are more dominant and more sure of themselves and everything. I feel like Travis and I are always like, I don't know, we could play this or we could play that or I don't know, you know? And then their, their attitudes are like, this way or that way. I mean, I don't think any guys are going to be in a band with me or Sadie if they like aren't down with powerful women. Travis and Ben are, you know, two of the like sweetest and most respectful men I've ever met in my life. The Wave is perhaps my favorite song. That song is about being really lonely, surrounded by tons of people, and how weird that is, and how nightlife and going out to clubs is really bizarre. I think The Wave is cool because it goes back and forth between these kind of like dynamic, rhythmic parts in the verses, and then the choruses are just straightforward rock. I'm not even sure how that started, but I'm pretty sure it was one of those songs that we wrote in like two practices. It's just a rocker and I love just thumping along because that's pretty much all I do, but it's still really fun. The best part to me is I finally get like a little bit of a lead line. Um, I sort of get to start the song off with this weird like Sonic Youth style little guitar part, or at least I would like to say so. The Wave offers a lot of what Sundries offers as a whole, but all kind of condensed into one song. You know, when Sundries was recording The Wave, um, I was in school from 8.30 until 5, and then I would drive up to Shoreline and record until midnight and drive home, and it's really hard. The rewarding aspects of it feed your, your soul in one way, and the other part does too, and I'm a firm believer in driving yourself as hard as you possibly can <laughs> to get what you want out of life. Sundries, the four of us, we all love playing music and want to do sundries and like see how far it can take us. But everyone in the band also has something else going for them in some way. You know, like for me, like yes, I do a lot, but like I want music to be my career, hopefully one day, maybe. I approached photography and music in the same way, I think, where they both come as a form of expression, and I think it's a personality trait of what drew me into both of those. I don't think I could ever work just in an office, nine to five kind of thing. Don't ask my girlfriend how I find balance, because it doesn't really exist. I was gone for 20 days in March, and then I get back, and we had to fly to Tree Fort. There isn't much balance. I think I can only do this for like two more years before I just like pass out. Hopefully we get big by then.
thing. It's, it's every part of being in a band. I love being in a band with people who I love and respect and who love and respect me. We all just support each other in a way that's like deeper than a normal friendship. On stage is one of those experiences I've tried to explain it where like you don't remember being on stage so like, you get off stage and you're like I know I just played a show but in my mind I don't remember like being on that stage for 45 minutes and I think that's one of the coolest things is like for me my brain just kind of shuts off and I'm just like doing it thank you very much for Sundays Okay, that's it for tonight's Band in Seattle. If you want to hear more, check us out on bandinseattle.com where you can hear full concerts and find links for more information about our bands and where they're playing next. David? To stay up in the whole latest band scene, follow my page, 100 Miles of Music. I'm traveling around the world by car from Brighton, England to Bellingham, America. Sounds impossible. Probably is. Yeah. You need a boat. I need a boat. I do need a boat. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Join us next week for more great music and great stories on Band in Seattle.